Hey, it's Loki here. This is like the third time recording this video. This time I'm probably going to get it right. Um, so what we're going to do is go over territory control. The first thing I've done is open Samari AAS V2, duplicated it, renamed it to territory control, set the game mode to territory control, and deleted all the capture zones so that none of that logic works anymore. Um, so we still have the, the main zones um, so the teams can spawn in. Uh, so we just want to go over to gameplay. We want to go to game modes, territory control, and we want to drag in the TC hex graph. If you drag it onto a spline, it doesn't work. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is move this hex extent over. So that's the area where the territory control zones can actually draw. The next thing is we can move the spline, and the spline uh, controls how far uh, the zones can be. If we look over on the right hand side, we've got some stuff so we can test the setup. We've got all these zones that have already appeared. If we move the if we move the spline, the hex skins disappear. If we click on test constant, we can see that in real time. We've got some start zones which I'll go over later. We've got some distances which are easier to see if we change the hex size. So if we change the hex size to 100, you can see there's a bunch more now. If I change this to 10,000, you'll notice that the zones are actually thinner and you can play with that with different spline numbers of spline points so one of the cool things about this is that you can drag this over like this and create different types of flow we've got ownership so we can set these to point to um, on each of those and it will change how things work you could also set it to point six and make an interest in invasion mode so that'll be something interesting to see You've got the win percent, which is how many hexagons overall that the team need in order to win. Now, if you're doing an invasion style mode, just bear that in mind. You've got the default capture time. You can flip the teams, and you'll see that the ownership there goes from some from one to two on the uh, debug text. The next thing I just want to quickly go over is you can see here this says five. That's the uh, this is the ID of the zone, and this number here is the number of surrounding hexagons. So we can see that it's actually two, and this one says nine. This one says twelve. So by logic standards, a uh, hex should only have six surrounding zones. So the reason for this is the hex scale. It's something that's fixed in the latest version, so yeah, that will come to the modest DK in the future, but basically change this uh, hex scale, which is the height, back to uh, around 50. Now on uh, maps that have a lot of height variance, what we ended up doing was having really wide zones, um, which meant that the height was matching the, uh, the width and the sphere boundary was actually the same, but on a small map like this, if the height is taller than the width, the sphere is much larger and collects a bunch more neighbors. So it was just bad logic and, and we changed how that logic worked. Uh, but you'll see now that this has got two, this guy's got five and the maximum is gonna be six in all of these. Uh, the next thing is that we wanna turn um, test off. And if we just grab the graph and move it a little bit, we'll see that update and remove all of the construction zones. And if we hit create now, we actually create these zones um, in real space. So we can go in, we can grab this, we can move it. It's actually a blueprint in the world. The cool thing about this is that we can actually go in and delete a bunch of zones. We can ignore the message that pops up here because when the grid recreates itself, it recreates those neighbors again. The reason we create the neighbors when we're starting off the generation is so that we can test those numbers there and see that those are working. So now that this is all set up, we've got a territory control game mode, we've got the hex graph set up, we've uh, just got to hit play now. Uh, those zones those zones actually exist as uh, as actors. Um, also there's one last thing actually which is the uh, anchor zones. So you can go in and eye drop these anchor zones and what an anchor zone is is um, you can only expand if um, zones are actually touching those anchor zones. So usually they go around the back. If they're not there, it will break. If you're in testing, it will also not let you select them because they're not actually blueprint actors in the world. Um, this is actually fixed in the latest update as well because we just pick one at random if you haven't picked one. Um, so when you destroy the hex zones in order to like retest some stuff and, and change some things up or you refresh the zones, those values will become invalid. Um, so we're just gonna jump in now and take a quick look at the graph. What you'll see here is, yeah, we've got that area where there's zones have been deleted. We've got um, some thin and thick areas. We've got some invasion stuff going on. So these are all things that you can sort of play with and make in your own uh, TC variants. 
Um, so yeah, it's going to be interesting to see some cool mods. Uh, I hope that helped you guys uh, with setting up that new game mode. And uh, see you next time. Have fun.